my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I am very sad actually to hear there are a lot of fights going on in the communities, a lot of dissensions, a lot of problems. Sadness. I think we need to really pay attention to this aspect. These are not my words. These are words of St. Paul. <laughs> See, there is a big tension going on in your face when I made this statement. The word of God Sunday is inviting <laughs> us to look into the deceptions which we have. I found very encouraging the deceptions which people dare, where St. Paul is referring to. There is a reason. They are basically worried about you no. Know, who is best from the point of proclamation of the word of God. We need to, we need to worry only what are the kernel of our dissensions. But one thing that you unite, can unite all these dissensions is the person of Christ. That's what St. Paul would like to tell us. The Christ who is the word and that becomes center of our celebration today when we celebrate <coughs> twin aspects of our Christian life. One is the centrality of the word of God, other side the unity which is required in the church and we are in the week of or we call unity obtained. So that which unites us is the person of Christ who is the incarnate word. Let us focus on this person. What is required is giving light to the darkest areas of our life. The first reading and the gospel is almost everything. <coughs> The contexts are very clear. The people of Galilee, scripture scholars are sitting here, in spite of that, I dare to say. <laughs> the Galilee is a gathering of people after the exile, surrounded by the areas or the nature of darkness from the point of Gentile world. So when it makes sense when the people in the darkness found light and the person of Christ is coming to <coughs> spread this light which to the people who are sitting in darkness. Many a times my dear brothers and sisters when some Important people visit our houses, maybe our own families. We have a tendency of preparing some place where they can access and some place we don't allow them to enter. Maybe because of our respect to the person who is coming, they, they should not see the darkest areas of our community or our, our life or our family. Instead, we will prepare one place where let him be there. We don't want the light to enter into the darkest areas of our life, which is a challenge in our, our physical life as well as our spiritual life. You say the word of God, no problem. 
but it should not enter into the areas where I don't want to touch. <clears throat> Mother Teresa, when she started her mission, had an opportunity to, not opportunity, she created an opportunity to visit a house, we cannot call it a house, a kind of shed, where one old man was living. And shed was in such a position that, first of all, nobody can access to it. Secondly, there is no light. And nobody enters there, nobody comes out from there. This man is sick and lying down. And Mother Teresa enters there. The first thing she started is cleaning that little area around the, that shed and inside the shed. And when she was cleaning inside the shed, she found in one of the corners one old lamp which was never lit. So she asked this old man, why there is a lamp here, why are you lighting it? Then this man asked her, why should I light the lamp where nobody is there to see me, neither I have someone to see. Nobody is there to see me, neither I have someone to see. And Mother Teresa asked her, if my sister's visits, will you light this lamp? And Mother Teresa lights that lamp and sends her sisters every day to visit that shed where this man is recuperating. And maybe after two, three weeks of their time, this man becomes manageable by himself and he sends a note to Mother Teresa to the sisters telling that my dear sisters now I think I can manage my own but tell the first sister who came that she is the one who lit the lamp in my life And we know Mother Teresa has a lamp in many lives. And today, the Word of God is asking us, first, allow the light to enter into our own lives, and secondly, to become the light of the nations. So that is the biblical con the the con context which is created in the gospel today. First part of the gospel is speaking about the light which has come to the darkest, darkest areas of uh, the nations. And the second one is the vocation that is given to the disciples. So this combination is asked of us today. First, the question to ask is, are we allowing the word of God? The light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Are we allowing that Lord into our own individual lives? Or are we restricting his area of visit to our only to the reception? Are we closing certain areas of our lives either just covering it up or locking it up? Are we prefer, are we preferring to stay on? in the darkness as the nations were in darkness. And once that light has entered into our life, then the second aspect of the gospel comes, the call, the vocation. Then the question comes, how can we be the light of the nations? Jesus promised to the disciples is that I will make you fishers of men. And I don't remember which author who said that. Today, we don't want to be fishers of men, but we want to be the keepers of a query. <laughs> we don't want to commit ourselves. We are happy with the comforts of our life. We want to just keep, let the fish grow, I don't touch your life, I, you don't touch my life, fine. But today the word of God asks us as the 
the risk which the life the disciples took by allowing the world the lives entering into life into their lives that which transformed their life without a second thought they were able to say yes lord we are coming back coming to you my dear friends today when we allow this word of god to touch our lives what our response contains in three c's be curious be convinced and be committed there were there was much of curiosity about the lord going around and making various miracles performing various miracles breaking the word of god to the people being courageous the context is challenges in this year space there was curiosity from the part of listeners and that curiosity is required yes if there is a curiosity to listen to the word of god already now we will be sleeping so the curiosity is there the first step when the word of god comes to us but sometimes curiosity is uh, the job of a bell ringer do have a thing you ring the bell things move you just ring the bell people will move whether you move or not is not an important thing but you just ring your responsibility is over there but it is inviting us to take the next step of convincing I'm sure the third years are sitting here. How well I can convince them by my arguments, by giving proofs, and they believe that God exists. <laughs> we can convince people, and we get convinced, and we say that this is. the true word of god and this is the person of christ he is the incarnation he is going to be our redeemer good conviction and it is required the second step towards becoming the light of the nation but with that conviction we don't become decision men when curiosity gives you ample feeling towards your experience when convincing gives you ample feeling towards your knowledge and understanding commitment tells you to touch your will the decision made yes i am convinced he is my savior and i commit myself to him totally as the disciples this commitment leads us to action as our blessed, uh, as our blessed mother accepted that word of god and became a committed person to start serving as mother teresa proved in her life by becoming the light to the people around her and the expectation which the congregation the church is giving or entrusting us with is that commitment without failing the first step of curiosity and convince the convincing statements or reasons leading to commitment to become the true life of the nations my dear friends today as we listen to this word of god let us take this challenge which Jesus is offering us on this word of God Sunday. Let us use our experience, let us use our understanding and knowledge, and let us come to the decision which comes from our will, will to commit ourselves to the Lord and the Lord alone. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs>